God drunk off your life. Today we are rebuilding Arsenal, but the theme is to not bottle the league. Now, they didn't really bottle the league, and the same people that are saying that we would finish 6th and 7th are saying finishing 2nd is a failure in a bottle job. But today we are going to rebuild them. We have $235 million in our budget. That is around the range of what Karinkis are going to actually give Arteta and the Arsenal team for this summer to build on what they had successful this season in the first season back in Champions League, joined by Bayern Munich, 10 to 2 on aggregate. Now, obviously, Declan Rice is the main player that Arsenal are going for for the summer. It's going to happen. I mean, it's pretty much almost happening already. They could, he could end up going to Chelsea. I know Bayern are actually interested in him as well. We are going to go ahead and bring him in. Joao Cancelo, we actually can't bring in. And the asking price is $1.3 billion because he is on loan to Bayern Munich. But Arteta likes Cancelo. I'm not sure why. He's another defender that can't defend alongside Zinchenko. So it is what it is. Mark Guay, we could bring him in as a backup for Gabriel and Saliba. Because Rob Holding just is simply isn't good enough. Kawar, I mean, he's not good enough on the game. In real life, he's decent. Ikai Gundogan. Getting kind of closer to leave Man City in the summer, despite his fantastic form at the end of the season. His contract is expiring, and I haven't seen any talks about him renewing his contract at the club. And again, Arteta, one of the players Arteta liked at Man City when he was assistant manager, and it's one that he wants to bring in for Arsenal as well. And then Dusan Vlahovic, I haven't seen anything yet for this summer, but last was the January window of this last season in which he was heavily linked to us and then he ended up going to Juventus. We could still bring him in and he could be a striker alongside Gabriel Jesus. That's the objective. We are not going to not bottle the league. We didn't bottle the league. And signing number one is done. Declan Rice joins the squad here at Arsenal. We went ahead and swapped him with Grant Shaka plus $40 million. Greta Xhaka obviously leaving the club in the summer. It's looking more than likely he's going over to Germany. But for now, he's going to West Ham in here. And Declan Rice is here to replace him in the starting 11. Next setting up, it's backup center back Mark Y. He will join the squad for Rob Holding. Plus 26 million. He's obviously going to be a backup for Gabriel. And then Cavour will be a backup for... Actually, no. Cavour backup for Gabriel. Guay backup for Saliba. Only if we actually sign a good, decent center back like this in January, we would have probably still won the league after we lost Saliba to Sporting. And we steal another player from Pep's side in Man City, Ikai Gunnergun. He would join the squad. Now, obviously, in the summer, Arsenal more than likely to get them for free. Well, any club more than likely to get them for free. We pay $35 million for him, which is still a lot cheaper than his actual value because his contract is expiring technically in 12 months. He joins the squad and he'll be in the mix with Party Odegaard, no, not Odegaard, Party. Um, and next signing, probably the last signing for at least this window is Dusan Vlahovic. He will join the squad and him and Gabriel Jesus will battle out for that starting spot. For now, it will go to Vlahovic. But Gabriel just simply could easily earn it back. And that's signing number four or five of the window done. And hopefully that's how it is going to be in real life as well. And here is the starting 11 going into our first season. Possibly trying to win the Premier League this season as well in our first season. We have Vlahovic at striker, Odegaard, Martinelli, Saka as our midfield three. Declan Rice and Thomas Party holding it down in the midfield. With Zinchenko playing as a left back, Gabriel Saliba as our center backs, and Ben White. Out as a right back, we have Jesus, Trossard, Vieta, Gundogan, Guay, Kavor, and Tierney on the bench. Jorginho doesn't make the cut. It is what it is. Just got to get better for him, I guess. Now let's go to January and let's see how much or how far this team can get. See if they can actually survive and be in the title race. And halfway through the season, we are right up there in the title race with Liverpool, Manchester City, not far behind, five points behind us. We do, they do have a game in hand over the coast, could go over two. However, they do have a game against us up next, which is I not really their game in hand. 
but it's a game in hand. We are going to go ahead and quick submit it just to see the result. It's a 3-1 loss. They are now two points behind us. As far as the Europa League go, obviously Arsenal were in the Europa League getting knocked out to Sporting. We finished first in our group just like we did in real life. This time we go with perfect 6 for 6. 18 points against PSV who no longer have a manager on the day that I'm recording this. And they won't have a manager for the final game day. That's kind of crazy. We are obviously in January now. I will see y'all at the end of the season. And with one game left in the league to go, we sit joint first with Manchester City. Actually, technically first off a goal difference. We have a five better goal difference than City. Liverpool sit third in the league with 82 points. They could technically still win the league. Man United look like they wrap up top four. Spurs in fifth. Chelsea in sixth. Newcastle in 7th and going down Fulham and a bunch of teams that could go down all the way from Wolves all the way to Bournemouth. So from 14th to 19th, final game day, that is that. We have a final game and it's actually against Liverpool. This is a massive game for the boys. Martinelli, Odegaard, Vlachovic, Saka, Rice, Party, Zinchenko, our whole team. We're going to go ahead and simulate through this. Martin Odegaard scores first 10 minutes in and we're Premier League champions at the moment. Gakpo levels it up in the 40th minute to make it 1-1. Odegaard's in behind before the half. I was jumping in just to see the scores, but Odegaard scores anyway. It's 2-1. I was just jumping in to see the Man City score at the halftime. But Odegaard's at the end of it, and we're up 2-1 going to the break. All right, man, Chester City. Oh, they're playing Southampton. That's an easy one for them. So we have to win this game no matter what, in which we are. It's 2-1 at the break. 45 minutes, as long as we can hang on to this lead, we'll be Premier League champions at the end of the day. Cody Gakpo gets his own brace to level it up here. It's 2-2. Gabriel Jesus might have just won us a title. He comes on for Vlahovic, and he makes it 3-2 in the 82nd minute. And Darwin Nunez comes right back and scores a kickoff goal to make it 3-3. Gabriel Martinez is in behind. He finds Jesus. Allison with the save. I want to jump in at the end here. So right here, I'm going to jump in because I'm pretty sure the game's about to end. And I'm hoping Manchester City draw the game. Man City somehow drew to Southampton, but it's highly unlikely. We're celebrating like crazy. I think we actually did win it. I think we won it. Did Man City actually draw to Southampton? That's crazy if so. Arsenal didn't bottle the league for once. We nearly did, but thankfully Man City bottled it just as much as we did. We go ahead and win the Premier League in the first season, and honestly, this rebuild's kind of pointless. I can't lie. I was going to go ahead and win the Champions League, but I don't know if I should do that. And when we already got here, we already won the Premier League. I expected this to take at least one to two seasons, or two to three seasons, but I only took one, and it's Odegaard to lift the trophy. We are Premier League champions. We didn't bottle it. We didn't bottle it in real life either, but y'all gonna say what y'all gonna say. Y'all are clueless. Arsenal, 2022-23 Premier League champions. We didn't win the Premier League. We won the Premier League, but we didn't win the Premier League. I am so confused. Did we play 38 games? 26, 8, that's what, 34? Yeah, we did play 38. We, what happened there? They beat Southampton 3-0. So technically, they do win the Premier League. So all of that about us winning the Premier League goes to waste. Manchester City are your Premier League champions. Arsenal do, in fact, actually go ahead and bottle it this time. This is a proper bottle. <laughs> For now, we are in the Euro I almost said Conference League. We are in the Europa League final against Ajax. We took down PSV in their group stages. It's now time to take down their biggest rivals in Ajax in the Europa League. Now, this one, obviously, we don't care. We want Champions League football more than anything. It's a 2-0 win. We lift the Europa League this time. Y'all can't take away this trophy from us. I don't know why y'all gave us a Premier League trophy when Man City won it, but it is what it is. We go on to next season looking to still win the Premier League and then add on top of that the Champions League as well. Kyle Saka is the top goal scorer with Gabby Jesus and Martinelli right behind them. Odegaard not really getting on the score sheet, but getting plenty of assists. Vlahovic hasn't really been playing that much, I guess. I guess Gabby Jesus is the highest rate, so he's been playing the majority of the games. Let's get into next season and let's actually win the Premier League for once. We kick season two off by saying goodbye to Matt Turner. We just don't need him as a goalkeeper. Ramsdale will probably never really get hurt. And if he does, we are fucked. So that's just that, really. And we say hello to our Tetas, one of our Tetas' personal favorites. James Madison will join the squad from Leicester City into Arsenal. 
And not only will he be a backup for Odegaard, he can also be a backup for Bukayo Saka. Able to play on the right and as a cam. He is a great addition to the squad and he will have a great squad depth for this next title run for this season. As well as possibly a Champions League run as well. Tommy Asu has gone over to Bayern Munich for nearly 40 million. Next player we bring in is a left for the center back to possibly replace and mentor Gabriel in that starting 11. David Alaba will join from Real Madrid. We needed a new left for the center back that is good enough with Gabriel because Cavour isn't. So Alaba comes into the team. He'll probably end up replacing him for this season. And if we continue on after that, Gabriel might take his starting spot back. But for now, it goes to Alaba for the Arsenal. The next player we bring in, we wanted to bring in last season, but we couldn't because he was on loan. Joao Cancelo, another defender that can't defend, will come into the squad. Obviously, he can't defend in real life that much. Maybe in FIFA he can. We'll see. But he'll replace Ben White at right back. Tommy Asu obviously gone. Ben White now back up right back for Joao Cancelo. And I think our summer window here is done for the majority. And our Champions League group, we get PSG, Lazio, and Dynamo Kiev. Us and PSG should easily go through that. I will see y'all in January. Here's the squad. Vlahovic, Martinelli, Odegaard, Saka, Rice, Party, Zinchenko, Alaba, Saliba, Joao Cancelo, Ramsdale, and Net. Let's get to January where hopefully we're top of the league. And halfway through season two, we are first in the league. And we are 11 points clear. We've been here before, haven't we? Let's see if we bottle it this time. I don't think we will on FIFA. Austin Villa up in fourth. Unai Emery doing a great job with them just as in real life. Chelsea in fix, fifth. Fix? What the fuck? Chelsea in fifth. Liverpool in sixth. Spurs in seventh. Going down at the moment is Middlesbrough, Luton Town, who just came back up. And then Leeds United and Sheffield United all fighting as well. Obviously, in the FA Cup now, we actually got a different Champions League group. We had Bayern Munich in our group, not PSG. In which we go ahead and finish second. We actually had a whole different group. Villarreal, Arsenal, Bayern Munich. We finished second. So we go ahead and get first place, which is Hoffenheim. And Hoffenheim finished first place with the group with Liverpool. So honestly, I'm happy about that. Who did Bayern Munich get? They got Liverpool. So that's actually kind of insane. We get Hoffenheim. We get a little bit lucky. I will see y'all at this game, really. Actually, I got to do contracts first. Fuck. Now, we probably shouldn't take this team lightly because they finished first in their group. But sometimes they get lucky. And this team is absolutely insane. We have 87 rated Vlahovic, 87 rated Martinelli. Saliba's doing good. Kinsella's doing good. Saka's 91 rated. We jump to Sim, jump to result, and we lose 2-1. So Vlahovic, and it could have been 3-1. Navarro could have scored a brace. It actually could have scored a hat-trick as well. We lose 2-1 in the first leg. Leg number two away from home. We need a better result from this game. And we get it. Martinelli scoring a late winner in the 87th minute to put us through 3-1 and 4-3 on aggregate. Martinelli actually getting a brace. Saka on the score sheet as well. We move on to the next round of the Champions League. And we have Man City in the quarterfinals. Holland, Foden, Alvarez, Silva, KDB, Gunnar, Diaz, Akonji, Sergio Dest as their right back. Obviously, Kinsella and Walker, probably not there no more. Walker, maybe. But Kinsella, definitely not. We jump to result. It's a 3-2 loss, and which could have been a 3-1 loss if Saka hadn't scored in the 88th minute to actually give us somewhat of a little bit of an edge going into the second leg at the Etihad. Second leg here against Man City, and we go ahead and win 4-2, 6-5 on aggregate. Saka scoring in the 111th minute to put us through. Declan Rice, Vlahovic, and Odegaard all on the score sheet as well. Saka actually missed compounding in the 28th minute. We could have avoided extra time at all. Declan Rice actually put us through extra time right at the end of regulation, and we are into the semifinals alongside PSG, Barcelona and Real Madrid. That's a crazy, crazy semifinal. And we get PSG in the semifinals. First leg up. I don't see no Mbappe. I don't see no Messi. And we get a draw. Odegaard scoring in the 83rd minute to equalize a 21-minute shit goal. Mbappe missing a penalty in the 46th minute. A 1-1 draw going to second leg at the Emirates. I'm losing my voice.
Second leg against PSG. We go ahead and win 2-1. James Madison comes on to score in 66 minutes to send us through to the final. David Alaba on the score sheet as well. Patrick Schick scoring a little bit too late, getting simply a consolation goal. And we are into the final of the Champions League, playing against either Barcelona or Real Madrid. It's El Clasico semifinal. That's actually interesting. So we will play one of the big Spanish teams, and my controller disconnected again. That's great. And Arsenal are your 2023-24 Premier League champions. We didn't bottle this time, and we got it done a little bit early. We was actually done a couple games ago. This is just the last home game of the season. And a 1-0 win against Millborough will add on to the top of lifting this Premier League trophy. We don't bottle it this time. An 11-point gap halfway through the season, and we hang on to that. And I think we actually made it even a little bit bigger. We have one more game left in the Premier League and one more Champions League final against Real Madrid. Now this time, us left in the Premier League trophy. They can't take it away from us for sure this time around. There is no them getting it wrong and Man City winning the league somehow. We have won the league for sure this time. I'm only going to show you all this because y'all seen the trophy lift last season. It is what it is. Finally, Premier League well, champions. See what it means to those players and the manager. Let's get into the Champions stuff. League final now, though. Champions League final against Real Madrid at the San Stadio Stadium. No Martinelli. He's out with red card suspension. So Trossard will come on to the starting 11. Smith Rowe getting onto the bench. Vlahovic, Odegaard, Saka, Rice, Party, Zinchenko, Alaba, Saliba, Cancelo, and Ramsdale, your normal starters. We are taking off, obviously, Real Madrid. They just fended off Barcelona. Benny Jr., Brahim, Valverde, Kamavinga, Tushmeni, Modric, Fernandez, Militao, Tamori, Courtois, and Mendy. Alba playing against his former club. Let's get into it. Modric, Zinchenko can't defend. Ramsdale has to save, and what she does. It's out for a corner. Real Madrid knocking on the doors early. Cello in for Saka. Saka taking it against Mendy. He's splitting in between Mendy and Militao. And Saka's in behind against the run of play. Courtois saves. And there's a poor clearance. And Modric is in behind. Saved again by Ramsdale. Zinchenko should be able to clear that. He does. Trasari gets past Nacho. We might actually have a counterattack here on. Can he find Martin Odegaard? He can. Martin Odegaard open. Vlahovic open. 1 0 for Arsenal against the run of play. Odegaard, can we double it right before halftime? It's looking unlikely unless the ref allows us to play on. He does. Trasari in behind. And Trasari to double it right before halftime. Yes, that might be us winning the Champions League. It's a 2 0 lead going into the break. We are breaking through that Real Madrid defense. And we got 45 minutes until our Champions League winners here in Italy. 45 minutes away from being Champions League winners in our first season back in nearly seven years. I think it's actually been seven years. Against Saliba. Passes back to Camavinga. Saliba intercepts the pass back. And Vlahovic on the ball now. In for Odegaard. Over for Saliba. Not for Saliba. That's Saka. And Saka's in behind. He could triple the lead. It's 3-0. And Arsenal will win the Champions League. And that's game over. Arsenal Champions League winners. A 3-0 win here in Italy over Real Madrid. And not only do we win the Champions League, but we also finish the Premier League in first, winning that as well, not bottling it this time around. We technically bottled it last season, both in the game and in real life. It is what it is. We get the job done here in the Champions League. The new Arsenal is here, and we're going to fight a lot. Champions League winners, well, season two. And Zinchenko, no, that's Odegaard. He will lift the trophy well, for the, the Champions what League for Arsenal. So hard to win this original 11 on the field. Well, original 10 plus Declan Rice. 
the job is finished. End of season two stats. Bukayo Saka, 36 goals. Martinelli, 23 goals. Jesus, 12. Vlahovic, 9. So Jesus has been playing the whole season. Cancelo, 7 goals from right back. Alaba, 7 goals from center back. Martin Odegaard, only 7 goals as a cam. But 15 assists. He's our top assister. So there's no surprise in that. That's going to be the end of the rebuild. Let me know what team y'all want me to rebuild next in the comments. Leave like, subscribe, and peace out.